nice. Let's start off with talking about the degree unapologetically strong campaign. Um, tell me about what unapologetically strong means to you and why it resonates with you. Um, for me, it means women that are pushing the boundaries in their life, in their career, at home, really people that aren't apologizing for the success that they've had and, and how hard they work to get there. And, and I love celebrating that campaign. I don't think women give themselves enough credit a lot of the times. And I, I think it's great that it's a, it's a program or it's kind of a celebration with celebrating each other, women taking note of what each other does and, and giving each other pats on the back for that. That's awesome. What other women would you say are an example of being unapologetically strong? Wow. Um, I actually had a chance to spend some time with Chelsea Clinton a couple months ago, and I really enjoyed my time with her. And it wasn't easy for her to live in the public eye with her dad being the president. And just what she's done, um, you know, in her career now and different laws she's trying to help pass. And I actually spoke with her about quite a few things. Um, my mom. I think my mom is unapologetically strong. She's, a, mm -hmm. she's an elementary school art teacher, and she teaches kids K through 5, and she has some of the most hilarious stories ever. And she she, she um, you know, brought up two females that are now living in the, the spotlight and trying to work very hard and, and make something of themselves. And I appreciate what my mom did for us and is still doing working. And um, some of my best girlfriends, I feel like what they've done in the workforce, they're unapologetically strong and things like that. That's great. I love the fact that you said your mom. Yeah. It's so relatable, too. Um, okay, so... Yeah, you did um, create such a life for yourself in the spotlight, and I really admire your career and everything you've done with it. I think it's such a fun thing, yet really serious at the same time. Um, so how do you balance having such a feminine look while you're in such a male-dominated um, arena all the time? I'm actually trying to, I guess, maybe break down that barrier even now. Um, when I broke into the industry, having a stylist, maybe worrying about your hair, wearing, you know, fake eyelashes, hair extensions, worrying about what outfit you are going to wear, not really, uh, maybe frowned upon in the industry. And there were some women that I noticed were very, very attractive, yet could speak X's and O's at the same time. And I kind of felt like, what's wrong with doing both and, and knowing sports and worrying about how you look? And it's interesting to me because the men that I work with, the gorgeous men that I work with, guys like Michael Strahan, who, you know, just replaced Regis on Kelly and Michael, mm -hmm. and um, guys like Howie Long that did uh, commercials with Terry Hatcher for a while, and Eddie George I sit next to on my set. I know those guys spend a lot of money on their suits and they take the time to look good and work out and it's not frowned upon at all. And and they can look good and, and still talk about sports. So I think that's a barrier I'm trying to work on right now. I know a lot of people say, oh, she likes going to movie premieres and you know she has girlfriends that are in movies or models and it's okay to, to like both. I mean, I, I'm actually the tomboy out of every one of my friends and you know I, I all I do is talk and, and watch sports and, and it's okay to like both. It really is for females. And I think that's a message that we should be sending to girls. You can be feminine and still like sports. I completely agree with you. I noticed I was looking at your Facebook and you had a picture of your heels. I think a lot of them were Louboutins and you called them your cleats. And I thought that was so cute. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, like I said, I, I think a lot of people, you had so many likes on that picture. Oh, that's cool. I, um, um, I am very much a tomboy, and I am right now learning a lot more about fashion. I have a great stylist. Her name is Jessica Pastor, and I just put her in fits because half the time I'm like, I don't know. I can't wear this. I can't do this. And she's really trying to open my eyes and trying different things and wearing different things and even things that sportscasters don't normally wear. And I think she's trying to help me bring a little bit of that fashion into the sports world. So I sweat and I'm glad I have my degree deodorant while I do it. But um, she is, <laughs> she's very, uh, she's trying to push the limits a little bit too much sometimes, but I, I think she does a great job with me. Okay, speaking of your deodorant, I have a couple of questions from my readers that I'm going to ask. Okay. First of all, what are your top beauty products that you use um, on set and off and why? Well, I think one of the biggest things, because I travel to and from New York and L.A. every week, which ends up being 10 hours of flying time, is just making sure my skin is hydrated. And um, my, I got great jeans from my mom with good skin. But I, I go out of my way to wear a really thick moisturizer at night because I'm also in hotels and you have different air conditioning and it just does a, a lot to your skin. So I actually use a lot of La Mer products, the eye cream, the, uh, the thinner cream during the day, and then I really try to pack on the heavy cream at night. 
Um, I also, because I travel so much, like to do like a moisturizing spray or like the Avion water spray on my face when we land. Um, try to do cream on my hands and on my legs. Just really try to stay moisturized. Um, concealer, I have my dad's dark circles under my eyes and on air. I don't want to look tired. Visine, I want to get the red out, uh, you know, wake up those eyes a little bit. And uh, teeth whitener, I am a freak about Crest White Strips. I live off of those. And um, I, those are, I, I drink a ton of coffee. I drink a ton of green tea during the day to keep me up. And you know, we have such a long day. We st I start at 7 a.m. on Saturday and we don't even get on air until four o'clock. And then we're still on air at 10 o'clock at night. So that's a long day and you gotta keep the energy up. So I pack on the, uh, the Crest White Strips and the Crest 3D, uh, toothpaste to keep a, a white smile. Mm -hmm. um, I love those too. And then um, one, two more actually. If you weren't a sportscaster, what do you think you would be? I don't know. I, I think I would probably be working for a football team or a university in, in their sports program. It would have to be something involved with sports. So that was, that was definitely like your passion before reporting. Yeah, I mean... It, my friends, I was a nerd, obviously, in, in school. I still am. But I used to write my friends in their high school, like, yearbook, I'll see you on ESPN. Who does that? But it's kind of what I wanted to do growing up. So there you go. That's awesome. And one more question from my readers is, who do you predict to win Dancing with the Stars? Oh, who do I predict? Um have you been following this season? Well, it's not on yet. It hasn't started yet. I know the uh, the the dancers that they selected, but let's see. Who right. do I predict? Well, I, I definitely hope Max wins. That's my, my homer pick right there. I, I hope Maxie yes. wins. Um, but I will say, I'm going to say, I'll say Sean Johnson again. Okay. Okay. That's, yeah. I mean, that's a good pick. And um, I, I watched your season. Um, a couple of years ago now, right? Yeah, a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, do you credit um, staying in shape to physique to 57? That's kind of my new my new crush right now. That is the latest thing. I've been doing it for the past two months, and I really haven't found anything that has gotten my legs into shape like this before. My troubled areas are kind of my lower half. It's kind of what I concentrate on the most. And um, I, I really love it. It's, it's really changed, I, I think, my legs, my rear end a little bit. Um, it, it really has helped those areas quite a bit. And um, it tires you out. And the good thing is we have them in New York and L.A. And I obviously live in New York and I work in L.A. So I try to get to the studio um, three to four times a week when possible. But I also do that to manage stress. And I'm not going to lie. I mean, I've worked with men for the past 10, 11 years. I eat like a guy. So it's kind of <laughs> rationalizes what I put in my mouth. So there you go. That's awesome. Yeah, because I've taken some physique classes myself in the city, and it's just, uh, it's tough. Yeah, I really enjoy it. It's, it's, it's a great workout. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I'm so excited that I got to talk to you today, and I love the, your answer for the unapologetically strong like, women thank and everything. You. So thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.